Good morning, folks. Uh, welcome to our first uPortal open source support briefing for 2022. Uh, we are going to cover Q4 of last year and Q1 of this year and a little bit of Q2. The um, Unicon uPortal team currently consists of myself and Chris Beach. Uh, we've both been around a little bit. If you need to contact us, you can email us. Uh, we also are on GitHub and, and Twitter, of course. Uh, but the best way to reach us is uh, via email or um, just reaching out to the mailing list. Uh, we should be able to uh, respond quickly with um, the way we monitor that. Chris, you want to say hi to the folks? Oh, just good to be here. Um, looking forward to the call. Today's agenda, we're going to cover five topics. We're going to go over the OSS program, kind of what we've been doing the last uh, six-ish months. We'll talk about the state of the Uporto ecosystem. Um, Chris will go over some of the uh, uh, Uporto Steering Committee updates and community events, and then we'll wrap up where I will dig a little bit into uh, log for j or log for shell and spring CVEs that have popped up over the last uh, four or five months that have been a big concern in the IT community and in particular how they don't really affect us, uh, but what we'll do to continue mitigating any of those issues uh, from uh, either appearing or lasting too long in our code. So for the uh, program review, uh, we have two new subscribers. I want to thank them and welcome them to, to our program. Uh, this is great. It means that we will have more resources to continue uh, maintaining the uPortal um, ecosystem, the various projects uh, with our contributions. Um, through this program. Uh, and it's it's really important, as you'll see here, our commits from it should be 2021 and 2022. In the last um, five months, we this program has really driven about 100% of the commits across uPortal and the portlets, and I believe the uh, web components as well. I didn't check every repo, but I checked all the standard portlets in uPortal itself, and um, it was really, you know, the uh, the program here that has done a lot of the work to address security issues, cut releases, those kinds of things. Of course, we're excited when we see uh, other contributors join in, participate. Uh, we encourage that, uh, and if you're at an institution and you want to help out um, outside of this program, we just ping us. We'd be happy to uh, ramp anybody up on on um, pull requests and helping with uh, documentation, those kinds of things. And since November 17th, which was our last briefing, we've had 42 Zendesk tickets. Um, come in, a various mix of support assistance, consulting assistance hours, uh, even some sustained engineering requests. Uh, as a reminder, uh, uh, support assistance are those quick questions that we can research for you. It's unlimited. You can send in as many of those as you want, and we'll do research or answer questions or you know even look to see if something is a bug or not. Um, and then consulting assistance hours are your planned set of hours, usually about 20 in a year, where you can ask us to do a deeper dive, join a Zoom call, uh, you know, cut a patch for you, or uh, log into your servers and assist you with any kind of log reviews or um, you know, tracking down bugs. And um, one thing I wanted to highlight is the open source support subscription is this program. Uh, most of you on this call are subscribers, and that's a, uh, there's kind of an annual program. Um, but we do do training, custom work, um, and installation upgrades. I bring this up because a uh, question from an institution had asked if we do more than the open source subscriptions. Uh, they needed uh, quite a bit of help. So I wanted to make sure that you all were aware that um, if you need more support than just the subscription provides, please reach out and we'll help you best we can. 
All right, so that was an update of the, of the program. We used to go through a bunch of tickets and, and discuss a bunch of things in detail, but it got really long and boring. And a lot of folks don't, don't want to know about the details on this call. But if you have any questions or want to discuss anything further about the program, feel free to open a Zendesk ticket. We can have a conversation. Um, going on with the community itself and the projects, uh, just another reminder that we have moved from github.com slash jsig to github.com new portal project. That happened last year. You, GitHub still does a redirect on the, the jsig uh, URL to the projects, but if you have a copy or a clone of the, uh, of the community versions of the repos, you might want to take a look at your remote URLs and uh, make an update. I'm not sure how long they'll they'll keep the redirect in place, but this is the, the new um, quote unquote organization. Um, there are three. There is the uPortal project, which is where uPortal, uPortal start, and the current um, portlets live. There's uPortal contrib. There's a couple of projects in there that uh, relate to uPortal. They haven't been officially adopted uh, into the community, uh, but it's a great place if you have an idea, a tool, a portlet, or something else related, directly related to uPortal, you need a place for it and you want to share with the community, uh, reach out to the mailing list and we'll set you up. Um, your repo and uPortal can trip. And then of course we have some projects that get quite old, no one uses anymore. Um, they're not deployed um, in anything current or new. Uh, those end up in uPortal Attic. Um, so we still want to make those available and occasionally those uh, become, uh, they get resurrected and brought back out. It's not very common at all, but um, we, we definitely want to have the code out there if you're using anything that's very old uh, so that it can continue to be available. Kind of the last thing is this documentation effort we're we're trying to get on. It's kind of the low low priority for us in our sustaining engineering efforts. But as we create new documentation, we definitely put it in uportalproject.github.io. And what we're trying to do is bring documentation from uportal uportal start and the old uportal four manual into this. We've got directories set up. There's even a, a little document inside of uPortal project, github.io, that kind of describes how we want to do this. So if you're interested in contributing with documentation, take a look at uh, that project. And um, I believe the documentation is right at the root of that project in a markdown file. Um, and also, as we start filling this out and it gains a little more momentum, we'll be sure to update you in the future briefings. Moving on to our releases, we had a uPortal 5.11.1 released. Has a couple of fixes, um, personalized portlet body content, um, and filter. Chris, did you, were, were those uh, the fixes you uh, submitted? Yes, both of those were for the personalization effort. Okay, do you wanna give any details on that? Uh, this is just a, a feature in uPortal that allows uh, folks to set up tokens in their portlet definition files, um, and then uPortal can replace those tokens with values that are specific to uh, the current user that's logged in, hence that personalization um, name. And, uh, and so these fixes just found there was some ways that um, uh, the tokens were not being personalized, and then that second one where it actually um, failed a cookie check uh, due to a null pointer that we had um, that one of the our subscribers had um, discovered, um, and so this just seeks to harden uh, that personalization feature. Great, thank you. Um, the third fix uh, <clears throat> was to address how J groups fires up even in situations where you only have one uh, Tomcat server, uh, and some folks don't uh, run J groups at all. So we've added a, 
a parameter to to drive which JGroups file um, you'll use. And so there is a, a default one that uh, does not have JGroups activated. And so that is uh, that fix. It's considered a fix instead of a feature because it was uh, something that many folks were complaining about and cost issues. So to, to have this uh, turned off, um, we more considered it a fix. Uh, and then some search parameter strings uh, were not being escaped. And so that was something we, we fixed to address a security, a potential security issue. Uh, the chores list is huge. We have constantly updated uh, dependencies because we have an automated tool that runs on occasion that lets us know. It also helps us stay on top of any patches for security issues on dependencies. So that's, that's pretty nice. Uh, feedback portlet. We have a, a new release here. Um, the update uh, of SLF4J, which is kind of one of the things that addressed the log for shell vulnerability. Again, we really didn't have it impact us, uh, but we have decided to migrate, and we had for years now, decided to migrate off of log4j. That effort just didn't have a lot of momentum behind it, but um, we certainly had some uh, earlier this year. So I just some general updates. Uh, the, the reason they're fixes is because a lot of times the dependencies can be uh, just updated by changing the version number. And other times we have to do a lot of uh, code modifications, usually not a lot, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of overstating it, but usually a couple of Java files, maybe a handful, two to a dozen, may need to be uh, updated or modified or some configurations changed. So again, in this place, that last fix is for, for feedback portlet, we completely removed commons logging and log4j and replaced it with SLF4j. And then with bookmarks portlet, uh, again, this was uh, migrating the logging over to SLF4j. There, these had not seen a release in a while. So we had, um, we thought this would be a great time to do that. Expect a lot more releases in Q2 and Q3 around uh, portlets and other repos. Uh, we've we've got a pretty good effort underway on uh, doing a lot of patching. It's just um, making sure everything is still working uh, when we do kind of this uh, broad log uh, replacement. I'm going to hand it over to Chris. We'll cover the next few sections. All right, thank you, Benito. Uh, so we wanted to give you an update on um, on the uPortal Steering Committee. Uh, as a reminder, uh, the uPortal Steering Committee is not part of the Open Source Support Program. It's a vehicle um, that is community-based, um, and we do offer our voice um, when available. Um, and Benito and I both sit on the community or on the steering committee at this time. Um, so we've been able to um, enjoy those conversations with uh, with you folks uh, as we are, you know, looking at guiding you portal um, to the next stage. Uh, some of the things that we wanted to I wanted to highlight. Um, if you wanted to read more about uh, the details on any of these uh, discussion points, um, or just want to keep updated on, you know, what happens at the meetings. Um, there's that link at the bottom, so the uPortal project uh, documentation site, governance meetings, um, and it's uh, Jonathan Tran does a great job at getting um, getting all the meeting minutes um, up there um, shortly after our calls. Uh, so there's been, um, and this is not an exhaustive list, uh, but kind of three main areas uh, that I felt that we've been discussing over the past several months, uh, community involvement, um, how and reviewing and providing some guidance on the roadmap as a steering committee. Um, it's really the adopters of uPortal that drives what they want to see in the um, in the application. Um, the steering committee is able to sometimes take a step back and and say, you know, is this a good idea? Um, do we need to dig in further in one area or the other? Uh, and then help 
publish that roadmap. Uh, but again, that roadmap can change based on, on what the community needs. Uh, and we've also been looking at surveys to assess use and interest of, um, of uPortal and various um, ecosystem components around the application. Uh, for coding efforts, we've discussed automated testing, uh, which I'll touch on um, as a review um, in a later slide. Um, and we've also uh, began this conversation of how to do rich content editing and management inside of the portal and how that might make sense um, in terms of you know what is what is the, the high value add of you portal um, as well as how do we how do we make it more useful for uh, for adopters and we've also touched in the steering committee on documentation and cleanup uh, so the the documentation strategy right as benito had talked about earlier um, that's something that had been discussed on um, and then was able to have kind of a definition set up on what our current strategy is in the community. Um, and then there's a link there if you want to go out and take a look at it. Um, especially encourage folks to help with documentation when you learn about something new or you found something that it took you a little while to find, um, feel free to put out a pull request into the manual um, to help the community, um, you know, when pe other people have those same kind of questions. Um, and then just guidance around uh, cleaning up older or unused repos and putting them in the uPortal attic organization. Um, just the effort to make sure that the uPortal project organization has our um, has the, the current active um, projects, uh, so we're able to focus on that and not have um, that area be cluttered up with things that are historical and good to keep around, um, but are not necessarily in use right now. Uh, so we touched on this uh, last time as, uh, during our last briefing, and then I wanted to highlight it again, especially for folks that are newer or maybe have missed that briefing, uh, our last briefing, and this idea of automated um, user experience and API testing. So we've been talking about this in the steering committee as a way to create um, a comfort or a confidence level when a release is made for uPortal um, when you, as an adopter, customize your portal and then are ready to release it in your production environment. Um, and then as uh, pull requests, features, bug fixes are coming in, um, folding in this idea of a more end-to-end -end test that you can just boot up your portal start um, in a kind of in a, with a quick start data set and be able to run, um, you know, as a user would run, um, a couple of action flows uh, to give that level of confidence that yes, indeed, you know, the bookmarks portlet does show up or yes, indeed, we can favorite a portlet. Uh, because when we're doing all these dependency updates and whatnot, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of areas that could be tested. And since it's a community uh, application, right, there's not a team of testers um, that is going through and making sure that every single um, piece of functionality works, right? And so it's really dependent on the community. And so these, um, this theory of, of automating some of the more end-to-end -end flows for testing is really helping the community gain that confidence. Uh, and so kind of a call to action, if you folks are interested in helping to develop um, the testing framework, um, right now we're looking at Playwright for the UX. Uh, we have used JMeter in the past. They're not to say that they are the best tools. Um, we do have some experience with them, um, but we welcome your insights on how to on how to set up this, these testing frameworks. Um, so if you've been using them or if you're interested in helping to set that up, uh, we would encourage you to, to raise your hand and, and to get involved. Uh, just as a follow-up from the last call, um, the steering committee has been talking about doing a, uh, setting up a public demo site, um, and that has been delayed for um, various reasons. Uh, so we just wanted to let you know that it's still on our mind, um, but it is on hold for now. Um, and then uh, we talked about how the steering committee discusses the roadmap, right? They don't, um, it's not necessarily like an approval, um, but it's more of a guidance. And so the voices that we've been hearing from the community um, and then the needs that we see from the application, uh, we are, uh, we've kind of disseminated into this roadmap 
Um, and it, it gets adjusted as time moves on. So if you see something on the roadmap that you're really excited for or something that's missing, um, please raise your hand as well. Um, as you can see, we're looking to, um, we as a community, um, looking to move portlets to web components. Um, the later versions of Spring does not support portlets. Uh, there are bridges that we can upgrade to Spring and still use portlets, but the idea is to start to move um, move away from portlets, but it can't be super quick because portlets are still quite a bit in use. Um, so we, ha we have that, that kind of track. Uh, we're also looking at making sure that the application is secure for obvious reasons. Um, and then just as, as more functionality is added to the application and as portlets are converted to web components, uh, the API um, must grow, right? And so the, the idea is to create this REST API that is that is super strong, um, that is hardened, and, and then folks are able to create web components based on those APIs in new and exciting ways, um, but still ensure that that core functionality of uPortal is going to stay strong um, and be able to be leveraged and reused. Uh, so as these um, as these efforts are completed, um, we are also taking a look at when is the correct time for uPortal 6 to be released. Um, just as some of these major changes are coming up. So uh, we don't have like a, a definite timeline yet, but that is in our minds. Um, and uh, kind of another call to action, um, OSS subscribers um, can and should help drive what's on this roadmap, right? Uh, you're part of the community and you subscribe to Unicorn's program and we're part of the community as well. Um, and so we're able to help create kind of a higher priority, if you will, um, especially since based on the, the subscriber program, we have, the, um, we have resources available to actually uh, provide commits and design efforts to this roadmap. And so as you uh, raise your hand and say, hey, this is really important to me, or, you know, I really don't care about this, um, that helps to inform us on, um, on next steps with the roadmap and, and the direction to take. And then I wanted to touch on community events. Uh, so Open Aperio for this year is going to be June 14th and 15th. Uh, it's going to be all virtual. Uh, there are some uh, like regional or um, kind of smaller group gatherings, um, but it's, it's mostly going to be virtual. And if you want to see more details, there's the link there um, that kind of describes it a little more on what, uh, what this conference is. Um, is going to be focusing on. Um, it's going to run from about 9 a.m. until uh, about 1 p.m. Um, in the Eastern time zone, trying to get more of a global audience. Um, and the focus is really going to be, um, in terms of uPortal, is going to be on gaining new adopters. There's not going to be you know, deep dive tech talks and, and whatnot. Um, so if you folks are interested in, you know, you're just learning about uPortal, um, just getting into it, and you want to, to talk with other people that are interested in it, um, that might be good, as well as if you are interested in helping to, you know, build the community, um, you can join and then share your experiences on, on what you find useful about the application and whatnot. Um, and then if we can have enough uh, uPortal folks there, uh, we generally have a roadmap discussion at the end of the conference, um, since it's a good time to just get folks together. And then for the other community event, this is more of a, um, we haven't set any dates yet. Uh, we just want to see if there's interest in the community to have a uPortal dev days. As the open aperio, um, as the focus is not so much on the deep technical side of uPortal, um, uPortal dev days might have more of an interest for folks on let's dig in and you know rip open a web component and see how it was built or let's see how web components these latest web components talk to the API right um, and so there's there's a lot more uh, we can dig a lot deeper into the technical side of uPortal um, with uPortal Dev Days um, but it's really only as good as the people that choose to join um, and so if Benito and I are sitting there. <laughs> You know, that, that would be fine, um, but we want to make sure that the community is engaged and interested um, before we work to uh, set up a, a dev days for this year. Uh, and so 
either at the end of this call or through the Zendesk tickets or even just on the forums or Slack, um, please let us know if you have an interest in attending uh, uh, UPortal Dev Days for this year. Um, attending as well as presenting or leading a technical discussion, um, you know, Benino and I could uh, present and lead a bunch of different sessions on how to work with uPortal, um, but it's more effective um, and really there's a higher value add when we're able to hear from a wi the wider community, right? uPortal Dev Days is not a Unicon thing, it should be a community thing. Um, and then if you are interested in joining, um, we would welcome your thoughts on uh, where the location could be. Um, is there an adopter whose school could maybe host um, like a conference room or two uh, for the Dev Days? Or is there a venue that's uh, close by to where you are uh, that you think would be reasonably priced and, um, and a good fit for the Dev Days? And with that, I will hand it back over to Benito. Great, thanks, Chris. <clears throat> A lot of good stuff, and, and again, mailing list too. Uh, you know, that's that's kind of our our old standby for communication. Uh, but yeah, we've adapted Slack as well. And feel free to send in questions or comments via Zendesk for those of you who are subscribers. Uh, okay, so that's kind of our high level. Uh, discussion uh, presentation, I should say, for for our briefing. I'm going to dip a little bit into these two topics, which are a little more technical. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I just wanted to discuss uh, kind of what they are and why they're not affecting us. So log first shell is what it was called. So this happened, I think it hit uh, mid-December. What happened is there was a vulnerability found in log for j version 2 and up, t0 and up. Um, don't believe it had too much to do with the JDKs. Essentially what had happened was that, uh, I, I, this is a little backstory, log4j v1 just printed out uh, strings, right? So you, if you're using log4j v1, if you wanted to add variable values or anything else in your logging, you would kind of have to concatenate some strings together. Um, other loggers uh, saw this and they had um, tokens in the string and then allowed you to add additional parameters such as SLF for J um, and others. They would allow you to put tokens into the string and then add parameters. And the reason for, for this versus the string concatenation is that if you're passing in parameters and you have kind of a no op logger, nothing happens. It just rolls back off the stack. If you're concatenating strings for a log, but you're not, you know, say for a debug line, but you have your logging uh, system configured to not uh, print uh, debug statements, then you're kind of building all these strings and tearing them down for no reason whatsoever. So that was the one of the drivers for that. So log4j, not to be outdone, said, hey, in v2, we're going to do not just token replacement, we're actually going to be, you know, make it more robust and do additional features. It is this part that caused the security issue. Uh, there was a, a path discovered where it could unroll or uh, process some parameters that should be tokenized to call, I believe in particular, it was some LDAP and you could escape out. Um, and this is where it gets into the nitty gritty and there were some concerns there. So essentially, um, what the issue was is a log for j v2 just try to do a little too much and it opened itself up to some vulnerabilities there's been some patches and stuff that's happened in that space but the u portal community i want to say seven years ago or so uh, had decided to switch over to slf 4 j and log back that happened in u portal and a few portlets, a couple of portlets still were using log4j, but they weren't being updated. So they were using log4j v1, which did not have the vulnerability. Um, there were, I believe, there was one portlet that had log4j v2, but it only had the API 
the thing with SLF4J is there's a bridge a package. So any calls to log4j actually get routed through SLF4j and log back. So we were safe. Um, now, log4j v1 might have its own security issues, and it's so old it's not really monitored for too much. And that's another reason we want to replace log4j v1 in the portlets and switch over to SLF4j. So there's two portlet updates that we saw earlier in the slide deck. Um, they were driven by this and the request that there hadn't been updates for a while and we needed to update some dependencies. Um, so that's what you'll start seeing in Q2. I've got several portlets that are uh, already uh, mostly patched um, to switch off of log4j and switch over complete to SLF4j. Um, there are also some dependency um, challenges there. Otherwise, uh, a lot of them would be uh, rolled out already uh, as of Q1. But just just to get everything up to date um, for our, our next release for these portlets, I wanted to make sure the dependencies were also updated to something modern. Some of them are quite old. So that's what's slowing us down. But again, we don't have that security issue um, in, in uh, log4j and within the portlets. Uh, so that's why we, we're not rushing it out. We're trying to wait, make sure we have all the dependencies there. So that was the one big thing that kind of hit our industry between December and most of January. And that's why we didn't uh, need to roll out a bunch of patches there. Uh, that didn't mean we didn't take a lot of time to dig into it, stay on top of what was happening, the communications, and verify that there weren't any issues. Uh, we spent a lot of time digging in, and uh, a few folks had asked and wanted some details um, on, on what's going on and, and are we protected or not. So there was some answering some questions, doing some write-up, doing some research. Uh, so we're happy to to report that we were safe from that particular issue that hit the industry pretty hard and, and widely too. Uh, and so kind of the latest big thing when it comes to security uh, in our industry was that spring, and I believe it at least goes back to four, I believe it also went back to spring three. So spring three to the most current version has a similar vulnerability. Um, but it only work, it only affects um, applications that are using JDK 9 and above. So again, we dodged a bullet because we're using JDK 8. You can look at JDK 9, but um, uPortal uh, is only officially uh, set up to run on JDK 8. We are in the middle of working on a JDK 11 plus version. The portlets have all I think all but two are now able to run on JDK 11 and, and above, but we're still working on new portal and new portal start. So that has been one of the things that have um, slowed down the release of, of that support. Uh, and what had to happen here is, again, Spring was using something in JDK, some string manipulation, uh, it down in the bowels of spring and uh, the way they were using it um, later versions of the JDK enhanced similar to log4j how strings were, were being processed right and and so this is the vulnerability that has been surfaced is that JDK 9 plus had expanded how it would uh, process and compute something low level uh, I think around strings again um, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, Spring is was leveraging that, and bam, now we have a vulnerability because of this new feature uh, that that was su you know, super minor in in these new JDKs. Uh, so with that being said, we're kind of holding back on like a U Portal six release because we want to make sure two things. We're current on all our dependencies, especially our major ones like Spring and JDK, so that two, we can quickly respond if there is a patch, with there, if there's any security vulnerabilities found. We want to be able to hear about it, get a patch in, share it with the eager subscribers and the community, 
and have everybody up to date as quickly as possible. So that way, um, you know, we don't have any long term windows of vulnerability out there. So uh, our recommendation to you is to stay, cur uh, stay uh, current on these kind of security issues. Uh, we will send out emails if we find any major vulnerabilities, especially on the mailing list and directly to our subscribers. Um, and just if you can be agile and have your institution preparing to be able to cut releases quickly, there'll be patch releases that aren't gonna require a lot of testing is what we envision. But if you can have your institution prepped and ready with the fact that you know, some, at some point we may need to patch your portal quickly, run it through some light testing and get it out into production, that would really uh, help you uh, to adopt any, any patches quickly. So and I think that's really all I've got. Oh, uh, this last slide. Again, JDK 11 and 5, we want to roll those out together, and those will probably be in uPortal 6. Part of the reason also is that we'll probably need to upgrade Tomcat. Tomcat versions are sort of tied to um, the JDK. Uh, so when we do uPortal 6, when we, when we jump up to JDK 11, We'll probably upgrade Tomcat as well. That will probably require some configuration changes. So when we do have a major version change, there's going to be some configuration files that will need to be uh, updated. And we're anticipating at least some of the Tomcat files will be um, modified uh, to match what, what's available. Kind of the last thing here is while I keep mentioning JDK 11, we know that the new stable version, long-term version is JDK 17. And we are trying to make uPortal and the portlets compatible with JDK 17. It's just that we're really targeting JDK 11 just to get off at of eight. Um, but we are trying to also make sure that it works with 17, but we're just not ready to, to say that, um, that it's a commitment. So 11 is what we're targeting for six. And with that, I'm going to look at chat. We'll look at see if we have any questions, see what we can do to answer them. Uh, so Jim Helwig, who's the chair of the U-Portal Steering Committee, says it's really op open to anyone. If you're interested, just ping us or you know reach out to Jim, the mailing list, or any of us. Juan, thanks. Yeah, that'd be great if we could um, have you and others attend. Um, we really have a good time at those dev days and Jonathan as well. So cool. Any other questions? Hey, hi Benito. Madhu here uh, hi. from MSDS side. So uh I just want like uh thanks for this session and uh, the, it was detailed enough. And uh like uh we have connected uh, with you for a lot 4J vulnerability. And uh, we understand that our current uh, version that MSTS is using is not vulnerable. But uh, you mentioned about changing log 4 j to uh, like you are changing uh, you uh, you are going to change basically log 4 j to SLF 4 j So uh, when this will happen, and uh, like uh, when we should expect that changes, or we sh we can continue with log 4 j yeah, great question. I would go ahead and and not wait for any changes. The changes that we expect to happen in these portlets are going to be quite light. You you're going to more than likely just change the version number in uPortal starts uh, Gradle dot properties, and it will be like a patch version change. Um, uh, so I think there would be almost no testing, especially if you're not using a lot of the portlets. I think in your particular yeah. case, you guys aren't using a lot. So you should be fine to move forward with the way things are now. And then, um, you know, we'll just make our announcements on the mailing list if if there's or when there's new releases. Does that help? Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, definitely. And about other one, that shell one, you mentioned it's, it's only with uh, uh, JDK 9 and we are not using uh, JDK 9. But uh, like in terms of our other Java application, we were doing the 
uh, assessment uh, analysis basically and uh, there was multiple blogs we found and uh, uh, I mean, uh, they have mentioned about having it with JDK 9, but mm, I, I'm not sure if it is a short statement that it's not come up with JDK 8. So, uh, so I just wanted to confirm because we are, uh, like we have worked on that vulnerability, even if we are not using JDK 9. So that's where my question comes from. Yeah, I've, I, I was looking at that as well and, and seeing what, um, how it manifested and uh there's there's not a lot of deep dives into it that have been yes. detailed enough right so uh that was my best take at why okay. it was um jdk9 and above and i keep looking for anyone reporting any issues with jdk8 and i have not found any um so i i can't say that i've spent days searching um but you know i'll search every once in a while to to make sure that we're okay um, oh, with sure. JDK. So to the best of my knowledge, um, no one has reported at JDK 8 as um, one of the culprits. And, I, and again, I think they've traced it down to, here's a new feature, Spring wasn't written with, it was written with the assumption that it was gonna work the old way. So it didn't have to guard the way mm -hmm. strings were, or process, you know, information were processed in, and that's why it became a, a vulnerability that stretched back so far. So, yeah, sure. yeah. yep, you bet. Um, yeah, great question. Um, so, anything else? Uh, not from my thanks. I'm good. Okay. Great. Well, I want to thank you all for attending. Um, it's great to see. You hear from a lot of you. Uh, we'll have this recording up on our YouTube channel in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll also have a blog post that it's easier to digest if you prefer reading. So again, thank you for attendance. If you have any questions, shoot them our way via Zendesk, mailing list, Slack, whatever. And um, I look forward to further conversations. So have a great day.